All right, so basic principles of grading hardwoods, it's the measurable percentage of clear wood. So we're gonna measure parts of the board and say this is usable, this is usable, this is not usable. So it determines the cost and the waste factor. So if you're gonna build a bunch of furniture and you know you bought the right grade, then you know approximately how much you're gonna need in order to complete the project, okay? And I'm gonna talk a lot about cuttings and that's the area that we're gonna measure. It's not something we physically do, but it's an area we're gonna measure. And these cuttings have to be a certain size. So they have to be a minimum size or bigger. And you're limited to how many of these you're allowed to take. Surface measure, it is simply the area you see uh, and, and it's the number we need to get in order to establish that percentage of clear wood. So it's the base number we need. So simply to calculate it, it's the width of the board in inches with the fractions times the length in feet. Now when I say length in feet, we always round down to the nearest whole foot. Okay, we call them standard lengths. So in this particular case, it's eight and one fourth inches wide by 12 feet. You multiply those two numbers and then you divide that by 12 and you get a number and you round that number to the nearest whole number, either up or down. So in this case, it gives you eight feet, what we call surface measure. It could be considered square feet, but it's not really because we round it. So it's eight foot surface measure. That's what we use to grade, but for the volume, you multiply that number times the thickness. This example is a two inch thick piece. It has an eight foot surface measure, so that's 16 board feet. We take board feet and then convert it to cubic meters. Okay, we don't use cubic meters when we're actually grading, we're using uh, imperial measurements. Now I have a grading rule um, that has all the surface measures on it. It is 36 inches long, so it helps us get the length of the board. And on the 12 foot scale, it gives us inches and fractions of an inch. And that's how we get the measurements we need. Now back to those cuttings. They have to be parallel to the edge of the board. We don't take any of these red ones here, this diagonal. That would take a lot of geometry to get that measurement there. Even though the end user could utilize that possibly, we're gonna go with the edge of the board as like parallel along that, and we can rip or cross cut. It's always 90 degrees to cross cut. Now back to that cutting unit I mentioned earlier. So when we multiply inches in width times length in feet, it tells us how many of these little one by 12 inch pieces are in those cuttings, okay? A couple characteristics I like to talk about that are what we consider clear. So if we're looking at clear cuttings, we need to know what that means, right? So the sapwood and heartwood, are allowed in what we call clear face cutting. So any of that area that sapwood and hardwood we will measure. Although when you're ordering uh, hardwoods, you can specify more sapwood or more heartwood depending on the species. And they, they're more than happy to accommodate. Glassworm and ash, it'll have a little brown streak. That's allowed in a cutting, clear face cutting. In cherry, they allow gum streaks and gum spots, which is a natural characteristic of cherry. That's allowed in those clear cuttings. A burl is simply a swirl or a twist in the grain of wood. It could be a near a knot, but it doesn't contain that pith center in the knot. So that's allowed in a clear face cutting. A sticker mark, you'll see that a lot in the rough end where the sticker was when it dried. It might be lighter in color. That's allowed in that clear cutting. Mineral streaks, that bluish purple, if you've seen a lot of tulip wood, you'll see this on occasion. That's allowed in the clear cutting. It is limited in tulip wood. Now these are characteristics that could be on the boards, but would not be allowed in a clear face cutting. Everything I talk about from here on, and some not even in a sound cutting. So the difference between a clear and a sound, sound means it's structural integrity. So it's things that, that may not be clear in appearance, but still doesn't affect the strength of the piece, okay? So sticker stain's a good example. That's where the, the drying sticker was and it got darker and it does not surface off. That actually, it makes it look really weird when you finish a table and it has this brown or dark streak across it. So it is a defect or an undesired characteristic, but it doesn't affect the strength. 
So that would be something that would not be allowed in a clear cutting. An unsound knot, anything basically over a half of an inch that is not solid, if it's loose or has almost like a hole, that would be considered an unsound knot. If it's smaller than a half inch, we could still allow it to be sound. Bark pocket, pretty much the same. It's just where the, the wood grew over some of the bark. Same type thing. If it's a half inch or smaller, it's okay if it's over that. Now, these are not allowed in a clear, but could be in a sound. A sound knot, simply a knot that's solid. We would allow that in a sound cutting, but never a clear cutting. Decay or rot could be on the board, but it's never allowed in a clear or sound cutting. We can measure around it to get our grade. Checks, when the wood dries, it kind of separates a little bit. That is, uh, if it would be surfaced off through a planer, that would be acceptable. If it doesn't, then it would be considered sound. It wouldn't be in a clear cutting if it's too deep. A split, split itself is not allowed in the clear face cutting or sound cutting. But when our grading system, we can measure on either side of that and still achieve our grade. So the split itself is no good, but it's manufacturing of the pieces. You can get a cut around it. Wormhole, same way. It is sound, so it would be in a sound cutting, but never in a clear face cutting. Wayne, it's bark or lack of wood, is the, that's the definition. That's this little bit across the top where the bark used to be. That's never allowed in a clear or sound cutting. It's really pretty much useless for uh, production. Grub holes, a really large worm. If they're larger in average diameter than a, a quarter inch or half inch, they would be considered unsound. So they wouldn't be in a sound cutting. Could be on the boards. Any of these things could be on the board. Some of it's limited. Uh, some of it would just be cut outside the cutting area, okay? Pith, that first couple annual rings of growth, that is limited on FAS and, and one common, but it's never allowed in a cutting, clear or sound. And bird pecks, if you're looking at hickory, that would be allowed in a clear face cutting. But most other species, it's considered a sound view. Okay, some minimum uh, standards that I'm gonna show you here is the board size, the entire board has to be at least six inches wide and eight feet long to make FAS, okay? There is some slight exceptions to this, but in general, six by eight. Those cutting sizes, the areas that you're gonna measure for, to determine the, the percentage of clear wood have to be in four by five, four inch by five foot increments, or a three inch by seven foot. It can't be any smaller than that, so that's the minimum size. And to determine how many cuttings you're allowed, it's surface measure divided by four. The most important thing that you should take away from today is the percentage of clear wood required to meet the minimum standard for FAS is 83 and one third percent. Or we look at it as a lumber inspector as surface measure times 10. So 10 twelfths of that board has to be clear in order to make FAS. Now the reason I emphasize that, the price for FAS lumber is based on 83 and a third percent being clear. The, one of the reasons we're very sustainable is because we utilize a system like this to separate the log, what comes from the log, into multiple sections to go to different parts of the industry. So here's an example of an FAS board. So the board is six inches wide by 12 feet. So we multiply six times 12, divide that by 12, and we get six. So I love to use 12 foot boards as an example. The width in inches is the surface measure. So this has six foot surface measure. The number of cuttings, we take that surface measure, divide by four, 
and we get one and a half. We cannot take half cuttings or partial cuttings, so we're only allowed one cutting on that board. Cutting units we need is surface measure times 10 for six by 10. We need 60 cutting units. Remember those little one inch by 12 inch pieces? There needs to be 60 in that board. So I start at this end, I measure up to this knot and I make a cross cut. I find six inches for this cutting and 10 feet long. So six times 10 is 60 cutting units. So that board right there meets the minimum requirement for FAS. FAS, the grade itself, was set up for tabletops, door styles and rails the, for entry doors, for these slats and panels, for moldings and millwork. So that's what that grade was designed for. It's going to that market. Uh, even some plank flooring gets resawn out of because it's wide cuttings, uh, longer pieces. The minimum requirement for the size of the board is only three inches by four feet. It's basically half the size of the other one. So three inches wide by four feet. In general, our uh, industry has moved to where they're cutting mostly six foot in longer pieces now because the machinery doesn't handle those little pieces very well. But the minimum size cutting for one common is three inches by three feet or four inches by two feet. The number of cuttings you're allowed is a different formula. So you guys ready for this? It's surface measure plus one divided by three. Okay. Main thing to remember here is the total area required to be clear is 66 and two thirds. So basically two thirds of that board has to be clear or as inspector says is surface measure times eight. That tells us how many of those little one inch by 12 inch pieces we need. So we're going to do an example here. So if I'm grading this board here, it's six inches wide, eight feet long. It's got four feet surface measure. If I take four plus one, divide by three, I'll allow one cutting on this board for one common. The co total cutting units I need is surface measure times eight or 32 cutting units on that board. So when I measure between the wing, I can get straight rip all the way through for four inches for eight feet. So it's four times eight, I get 32. One common is very well suited for the cabinet industry. I say it's more suited than FAS in most cases because your price point could be much lower, even though there's waste. But if you can utilize the shorter pieces, narrower pieces, there's a lot of pieces that we don't measure because they don't meet the minimum size requirement for the cutting, but it can still be used. And that's what this was designed for was the cabinet industry. In the US, all cabinet industry just orders one common. Unless they're behind on orders, they may order some FAS, but one common suited better. And one thing to note, if the better face, you know when I said we grade from the poorer side or the not as good side, here's an opportunity where we grade from both faces. So if the board meets one common on one side and FAS requirement on the other side, it has the potential to make FAS one face, okay? or a selects, which the difference between one face and selects, selects only need to be four inches by six feet, where FAS one face needs to be six by eight like an FAS. There is a uh, requirement or a limitation, if you will, on FAS and the one common side of an FAS one face, the wane, the bark or lack of wood, cannot exceed half the length of the piece on either edge. And also, on the one common side of an FAS one face, the wing cannot exceed half the length on either edge. So it could be like on this example, it could be six feet long on both edges, but it cannot exceed one third the width of the piece. And that's just on the one common side of an FAS one face or select. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the minimum size board is three inches by four feet, same as a one common, but you only have one minimum size cutting, three inches by two feet. Uh, number of cuttings allowed, surface measure divided by two, but only 50% of that board needs to be usable. Surface measure of this board is five. So we divide that by two. We are allowed two cuttings on this board. Surface measure times six or 50%. We need 30 cutting units. We found 35. The application for, for two common is typically either small furniture parts, picture frames, things like that. Our number one staple for this is flooring in the US for that solid three quarter inch, two and a quarter, three and a quarter inch wide flooring.